Hey guys, gonna deviate away from some stuff that I was working on for the season to talk about two pretty big things that Bungie recently showcased. The first is a teaser for the final shape. So, spoilers coming up for that if you don't want to know. And the second is a teaser and Vidoc for Marathon, which is Bungie's next game. Gonna talk about Final Shape first, so if you don't want any spoilers, it is time to leave or skip ahead to the next thing. If you somehow have not been spoiled already by everyone else's YouTube thumbnails and tweets and all that. So this teaser doesn't exactly have any gameplay information. It's only about 50 or so seconds long. It has Ikora sitting around a campfire in an unknown space talking about all the things that have happened in the past couple of years and in comes Cade 6, voiced by Nathan Fillion. Bungie is seemingly going all out for the finale here, and I know I'm not lore guy exactly, but, you know, let's talk about it. The main thing to note about Cade is his eyes. They have a very smoky effect to them. His eyes are not normally like that. Also, he's dead. Like, pretty dead. This has naturally led to a lot of speculation, like, how and why? As for the how, I think the best theory I've seen is that Cade is going to be a nightmare, as people have coined, a nightmare, but not an enemy. I know that nightmares are the darkness's side of things and memory and consciousness. It's not literally a part of the light. You get it. If all of these villains from the past can return as nightmare figures going back to Shadowkeep, what's to stop others from coming back as memories or dreams if we're going to go opposite of nightmare, you know, whatever. The next current theory is that Ikora and Cade are inside of the Traveler, given this final shot of the teaser. You have that portal that the Witness opened up in the distance there. The sky can sort of resemble the color of what the inside of the walls of the Traveler might be, or this could be an entirely different place altogether. As for how they got in there, some are speculating that guardians who die are sent inside the Traveler, which would also imply that Ikora is dead in this, but she has her ghost, so did she travel through the portal successfully? Had she get in there? Obviously, we'll learn in the expansion. We're also going to be having some more exposition given to us about the Veil over the year, I assume over the year. We've already gotten a taste of it this season with the Parting the Veil quest, and I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that whatever we uncover about the Veil is probably going to explain this teaser. People are already saying that the newest lore for the Veil is that the Veil is sort of like the, the brain, not the brain, I don't know, the memory, the consciousness of the universe as a whole, something, something. There's a lot of speculation about multiple timelines and afterlifes, multiple planes of existence, and I am not qualified to even speculate on these things. I'm seeing people talk about lore that I didn't even know existed out here. However, there's a lot of discussion about Cade being back for the final shape for this expansion. Obviously, we don't know the implications of Cade being back just yet, but that isn't going to stop people from saying that the game is ruined because they brought back a dead character or something like that. My guess would be that he's not actually fully alive. He's going to be a part of this finale expansion in the story, and then that'll be it. It's not like he's being resurrected and his death is being undone. Yeah, you know, I think Bungie knows better. At least I don't think that's going to happen. Maybe it will, and we're all wrong. I don't know. His tone from this teaser alone gives me a bit of hope that he's more like the Destiny 1 Cade versus the Destiny 2 Cade. Destiny 1 Cade was a lot more reserved, still kind of snarky and sarcastic, though. Destiny 2 Cade was... I mean, just look at any marketing material for the first year of the game, you'll kind of know what I mean. Just went a bit too over the top with him. So I'm hoping Bungie dials up the seriousness here, kind of get some of that old... Cade back. I think it's pretty cool as a sort of last hurrah to do something like this, especially with the original voice actor. Not that Nolan North did a bad job or anything, but the execution of all of this is what will ultimately matter. I don't care that Cade is back. I will care about how it is done. That's what matters. The execution of Cade 
being back. The big reveal of the final shape and potentially some post final shape news will be in August, like Bungie has done for the past couple of years. I think they said August 22nd, which is around season 22's launch. And I will be covering that as I normally do. Until then, you know, wasn't expecting this teaser at all. Pretty cool to see something so early. I was kind of blindsided by it. Just like someone in my chat said like, oh, Bungie teaser coming up right now. And then I just like, I just wasn't prepared for it. So it's pretty interesting to see, but you know, now we go back to waiting for another three months. The second thing is that Bungie has announced their next game, Marathon, which is going to be a PvP extraction shooter. This game has zero connection to Destiny whatsoever. Marathon was a game that Bungie made back in 94, had a couple of sequels. It's also a shooter, but this game is not a direct sequel to those games from the 90s. It is in the same universe, however. Marathon is not going to have any sort of single player campaign or anything like that. It is going to be completely PvP driven with all the fixins that you'd expect from a PvP game, dedicated servers, disconnect recovery, etc, etc. And beyond that, besides some graphics that we got, not really a lot is known about the game. Bungie also put out a Vidoc which shows off some of the art style and they talk about the game a little bit, but they don't show any gameplay. And this is the last we're going to hear about Marathon for a while. The next time Bungie talks about it is when we'll have some gameplay. My guess is that we don't see this game until 2025. For those of you who may have heard about Matter, which was speculated to be Bungie's next game, I believe that Marathon is Matter. And Matter is just a code name, nothing too crazy there. Marathon is going to be releasing on current gen hardware. No PS4, no Xbox whatever the name scheme for the last gen xbox is just ps5 xbox series s and x and pc and it will have cross save and cross play before we continue i know nothing about this game i didn't play the old ones i have not been invited to play this one i have spoken to no one at bungie about this game no one has spoken to me about it i have zero connection to this at all just putting that out there, just in case people are speculating. I would be very surprised if any Destiny content creators have had any access to this game at all. So, yeah. PvP extraction shooter? Personally, I have had zero interest in this genre. Battle Royales, Tarkov, whatever else is out there. It has not really grabbed me in any significant way. I think the only thing that has was Apex at launch. That's not to say that I'm opposed to trying stuff out, but I look at something like Tarkov. I I know it's not for me. That's not that's not what I like. Whether or not this game will interest me, you know, I need some gameplay first before I'm passing any sort of judgment. I'm happy that Bungie's getting to work on new projects, actually have a brand new game coming out. It's awesome. Really wondering how else they can flex their muscles after over a decade of Destiny production. They're also kind of inviting the rest of the gaming world back into their studio, I guess, for lack of a better term. Destiny might as well be Antarctica when it comes to first-person shooters. We are so isolated from the rest of the gaming space. At least as a content creator, this is how I feel. You look at some of the top creators in the shooter space, they're playing CS, they're playing Call of Duty, they're playing Apex, they're playing Valorant. They play a super wide range of shooters, and then Destiny is just on another planet, comparatively. We're the aliens. But that doesn't mean I expect people to play Marathon and be like, oh, what's this other game? Destiny? Oh, I'm going to try that out. Like, I don't think that's going to happen. Am I going to cover this game on the channel? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but I will say there's a reason I am a PvE content creator and not a PvP one. And that is because I am not good enough at PvP to be a PvP content creator, or at least the PvP content creator that I would want to be. Not to mention the vast amounts of competition in the creator space when it comes to shooters in general. At the moment, I have no plans to cover the game in the way that I covered Destiny when it first started getting information back in 2013, although plans are always subject to change. 
I got a lot to talk about in my 10 year anniversary video. The channel just hit 10 years old on May 24th. So who knows? Who knows what the future holds? I was not really planning on making this into a bungee channel, if you get what I'm saying. I wasn't planning on making this channel into a hub for all bungee games going into the future. It was just really meant to be a Destiny channel. So I don't know. I don't know. Otherwise, without any gameplay to look at and knowing that we're not going to see anything for probably quite a while, I don't have that much else to contribute regarding Marathon. I don't play the genre pretty much at all, so I don't have much insight as to what they could and could not do. I don't know the issues with the genre, what it excels at. I haven't played the old games, so I don't know any of the flavor of the game. So I don't really feel like I have any qualifications to speak about this game at this moment in time. And that's it. Let me know how you're feeling. That's it from me. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.